Today I'd like to tell you about how at RSC we're uh, using our skills and understanding of cheminformatics, uh, spectral data handling, and how to mesh together data to support a project called Pharmacy. We're all doomed. Well, let's be honest, we're all going to the same place, but there's so much been going on over the past few centuries to slow that down to extend their lifetime and yet we still face some horrendous challenges in the field of, of health. So this recent report by Fergus Walsh says that 4 in 10 will get cancer and the diseases account, account for over 7 million deaths worldwide. There isn't a single one of us probably who hasn't been affected in some way uh, by a family member, a friend, somebody we know who has got cancer and it will affect many others. The top treatments of cancer uh, are shown here and many of these you, you will likely have heard of as, as, uh, as drugs, paclitaxel, commonly known as taxol of course, uh, venorelbine. These are very very complex chemical compounds and many of them are natural products. The importance of natural products over the years is very clear, over half the drugs that were introduced between 1940 and uh, around 2006 were of natural origin or they were inspired by natural compounds, i.e. compounds were identified and then uh, the drugs were actually derived from the, the scaffolds. So natural products are clearly extremely important to our development of drugs and that continues to be so. It's not just cancer of course, uh, we have various drugs that have been um, developed as a from the basis of natural products and many of these uh, people will have taken or are taking uh, Lipitor is of course one of the world's top known anti-cholesterol drugs Cyclosporin, most of you have already had that Moxicillin, etc. Now, as I said, we're doomed and just in the past couple of weeks some very interesting things show up if you believe everything you read on the internet, and of course, who wouldn't? So this is the mo well, one of the most recent ones I was reading yesterday. Uh, I live in North Carolina, and ticks are a real problem. And now we have this situation where a bite from the tick makes you allergic to meat. I'll let you go off and read the details about that yourself, but uh, we have a lot of issues with ticks in North Carolina. So we're facing this particular challenge from nature. Then we have this situation where uh, algal blooms are uh, becoming a, a real, real issue. And um, some of you will likely know the story of what's happened uh, in Ohio of late, where almost half a million people didn't have safe drinking water. And this was just from this morning, where a toxic red tide bloom is approaching the Florida coast. And uh, just to show you how interesting the science is behind some of these algal blooms, Brevitoxin, one of the compounds here, Brevitoxin B, uh, produces these, in many ways, beautiful red blooms, but incredibly, incredibly toxic compounds result, and you get neurotoxic shellfish poisoning. Uh, so this is Brevitoxin. So nature is quite a little pharmacy, of course. And then, of course, we continue to get the warnings of antibiotic apocalypse. I think it comes just after the uh, zombie apocalypse, but we'll see. So the antibiotic apocalypse is that we, for many years, we have been uh, overdosing with antibiotics. We've been getting resistance built up to antibiotics, and we're, we're truly at risk. And the general picture for antibiotic resistance is that, um, you know, the bacteria are exposed to certain antibiotics. Most of the bacteria are affected, they die, uh, but those that are resistant actually multiply, uh, they become more prevalent, and then and then the, the uh, infection evolves into a resistant form. And we have major problems at this point. If you look at the discovery curve uh, of, of primary drugs over the past few years, what you can see is that we did spike around the 1960s with many of these uh, natural product drugs, and then uh, quite a significant decay through the 2000s, and yet we we haven't lost faith in natural products, and there are 
significant efforts going into to finding new products, new natural products. RSC has been working in the field of natural products for a number of years. We do have a number of, of uh, journals that are available, uh, databases. The Natural Product Updates is, uh, was originally um, uh, a database in printed format. You've got the, uh, the fact that it is an online database that you can review. We've got NPR, Natural Product Reports. We've got uh, RSC, Natural Product Books. And now uh, the databases, of course, came Spider has a lot of natural products in it, and we've made sure that the natural product updates database is searchable through there. And we also have a, a newly added database called Marinlet that I'll be telling you about shortly. So our focus today is discussing how we're working to support the pharmacy project. And the project is uh, led by a group of scientists from Aberdeen University by Marcel Jaspers. Uh, it involves a whole set of European labs and they're working together to try and discover new antibiotics from the ocean. So they're harvesting new chemistry from, uh, from deep in the ocean. They are doing analysis to identify whether or not there are new compounds and uh, whether or not the new compounds that are identified uh, then go on to, to show activity. Our support at RSC is to deliver uh, pharmacy website. Now this this isn't just a standard website, there is already a pharmacy website which you can go visit, of course, uh, but this is actually to support the data. Uh, we want to provide access to a natural product subset of interest, so marine natural products specifically. We want to support the development of dereplication techniques, and I'll be telling you about what that is, but it's searching NMR features against the database as well as other forms of spectroscopy data. And we will also do uh, additional work around advanced searches for mass spec data. And then ultimately out of the project will, will come a whole lot of uh, open data that will be shared with the community to support natural products work. The pharmacy website that we're developing for the data uh, utilizes a chemical registry system that we developed as a result of the open facts work we've done. And the open facts work is a separate European project funded by the Innovative Medicines Initiative. So we've uh, done additional work with that uh, registry system and uh, building um, an extensive architecture around it. So this will originally be behind a login. It will be for pharmacy users only, um, but uh, will ultimately be open to the community. We will enhance the platform with um, new forms of data deposition capabilities and some dereplication technologies. Again, I will explain this shortly. So for those of you who use ChemSpider, you will recognize the basic uh, interface here. We have a simple search interface for, for doing text-based searches. We have structure search, substructure search, and mass spec-based searching. And at present, we, we can host a set of compounds in here. We, uh, we can deposit um, tens of thousands of compounds. Uh, it carries the usual information, the molecular formula, monoisotopic mass, Etc. Et so a standard record looks like this. Uh, here's the compound record. We've got the formula, the masses, again, classically useful for mass spec searching. Um, we've got the inch, the inches and the, the smile strings and the link to the camp spider ID. So, so it's a very basic platform for um, compound hosting. This is part of a larger architecture. Uh, which we're calling the, the repository architecture that we're building out. And there's a publication recently uh, gone out a couple of weeks ago, and it's in the Journal of Computer Aided Molecular Design. Uh, so that, that paper may be of interest to you. We discuss what the architecture is that we're building, and we're building the data tiers out to include compound reactions, analytical data, materials, documents, crystallography, etc. And then we will have. APIs built on each of these um, containers, and we're building out the user interface components to provide access to the data. And then on top of that, we will have the individual user interface layers that we will build. So ChemSpider, in its new form, will sit on top of this architecture, but it will have a new, new interface. Uh, this is all well in the future. We'll build the ELM notebook interfaces into it, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a whole series of flexible interfaces that we can do. Uh, 
this is the compounds capability built in the data repository. This is the status of our work on reactions, analytical data handling. Uh, we've done a very basic handling of, of crystal data. We don't really uh, intend to pursue this too hard at all. It's just a, showing the, some of the capabilities you have when you can embed uh, open source components like JML. And then a deposition gateway that allows us to deposit each of the forms of data with uh, the ability to test and validate the data as it goes in. So many of you will have heard me speak about <clears throat> the chemical validation standardization platform for checking the chemicals going in uh, for hypervalence and uh, for charge balance and absence of stereo sensors, etc. But you have the same things you need to do with reactions, checking for reaction balancing, spectral data to make sure the spectra may be referenced, etc. So this is the deposition game. So from this point forward, <clears throat> we're working on extending the pharmacy site. And specifically, we're going after the spectral data handling now to support the dereplication process. So when the compounds are isolated, then they're put through chromatography, you generate UV vis data, measure lambda max, you have some basic mass spec data. And then you try and determine whether or not these compounds have been seen before. And the way to do that is to search a database of existing compounds. We're basically looking for whether or not these compounds have ever been registered. Because if they have, then there's like, unlikely to be as much interest in them. What we're looking for is novel chemistry. And of course, you've got Lambda Max, you've got Mass Spec, uh, NMR data increasingly to get down to the details of what those compounds might be. So, uh, it's this dereplication process where our focus is at present, bringing together these analytical data and trying to identify the new compounds. So our, our position is to build the platform that hosts these data. Uh, and we're also working in collaboration with ACD Labs, who have provided a number of tools to the project. Um, and my colleague, Patrick Wheeler from ACD Labs, will be talking about, uh, about this in a separate talk the ACS meeting here at the natural product session. And these are the types of questions you have. You, you can run an NMR spectrum like this. And then the question is, is this a known or not? You have the mass spectral data. You have the lambda max. Uh, it's possible that you will have iso isomeric forms where, this, where you have the same mass. But if you have an NMR spectrum, is this known or not? The only real way to figure that out is to search into the database. Now, you can do some very basic interpretation of the spectral data. You can pull out uh, some of the signals quite clearly. Uh, my colleague, Saren Dab, uh, who manages the Marinlet database, will talk in more detail about this particular example and, and how uh, the Marinlet platform could be used for this. We've also got, of course, complex 2D NMR data where you look at coupling patterns and you can figure out substitution, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what we need to search against with these spectral data is this database containing marine natural products. Once you've got those compounds in there, you automatically have formula and mass for searching. Um, what would be ideal is if that database actually hosts all the spectral data that was ever acquired for those compounds. And if you don't have that, then maybe it's possible to compute spectral features of interest that you can still search against. So most of you probably know that in uh, September of last year, 2013, RSC did acquire the Marinlet database. Uh, a couple of gentlemen that I've known for a number of years, John Blunt and Murray Monroe, had built up Marinlet over a couple of decades. And it was a great platform, uh, very high quality data, highly curated, and had done a wonderful job of building this platform out. They're also, because they're practicing chemists, and have been publishing on natural product identification for years and dereplication, their expertise is very valuable to the project. So Marinlet has got uh, over 26,000 articles, so it's marine uh, natural products literature. So 26,000 articles, the structure search database of over 20,000 compounds, and it includes all the taxonomy information, the location, data where available, literature, uh, links, the spectral features 
that they layer on generated algorithmically and uh, these are very valuable for the dereplication process. I won't talk in too much detail about my relics because that's a separate presentation but here's an example screen where you see the compound of interest and you see the lambda max is listed and the exact mass and the formula etc. And the spectral features for each of these compounds are calculated so that what you can do now is you can look at your spectral spe spectra you can extract some very basic information as much as you can with basic interpretation and start doing searching in there. So you could say we've got three singlet methyls, we've got um, a 1-1 one, one disubstituted compound and we realize that there is a, a vinyl methyl in here too. So you just enter them into these boxes and it will retrieve the compounds of interest. It can retrieve a set of compounds but when you filter by mass of course it will generate from there. So this uh, dereplication capability is being widgetized so that we can embed this in the pharmacy website. Uh, we will then generate structural features for all compounds that are going to be searched in the pharmacy website, which is different than Marinlet. Marinlet is, is its own data set, but we will be building an extent, extended data set of compounds of interest. And then we also want to do what we can to support computer assisted structural elucidation because when you have a lot of spectral data it is possible now to utilize computers to elucidate the chemical compound and um, I worked at AC Labs for 10 years I've worked on this project uh, I believe it is the be best pro product in the world for doing a computer assisted structural elucidation and uh, Patrick Wheeler from ACD Labs will give a separate talk on this so what is case so it is really a matter of taking in the data, ingesting it, providing the connectivity maps from the data as best as possible, and elucidating suggested structures, rank ordering them based on predictive technologies such as protein carbon spectrum NMR prediction. And uh, as I say, this will be talked about separately, but it's a complex task, taking complex 2D data in various forms, in here you would have the proton data, you would have the COSY data, you would have HSQC, you would have HMBC, and these molecular connectivity diagrams as you see on the, on the right uh, are generated and the, co the compound will be generated using structure generators, taking the molecular formula and generating all possible molecules. I don't have time to go into it in too much detail, but it, does it work? Well, actually we have a publication from a few years ago where we took peer-reviewed publications about natural product structures and we examined the data and we, found, and we found many errors. So using the case system, we were able to correct many of those errors in the literature. It's, a, it's an interesting article to take a look at. So in order to support this and to provide good skeletal fragments and to, to enhance the underlying data for the case system which uses fragment libraries and assigned data uh, as well as um, the relationships between, between the compounds. We delivered the entire ChemSpider set, millions of compounds, uh, but the, the validated compounds are appropriate, not all the inorganics, not all the organometallics, but uh, the small organics. So we delivered that set to ACD Labs and they've included those libraries into the structural lucid data software. And based on early reports, um, they've already shown that the inclusion of ChemSpider is very useful for uh, allowing for um, elucidation of unknowns. Next up, the work that we want to do is because we want to increase the size of the marine natural products data set, and we, we'll probably just expand it into all natural products if possible, we want to. Uh, allow the community of users to help us tag up ChemSpider. So our particular interest for this project is tagging it up for natural products, but we've also layered on various dictionaries that allow people to tag. So here we see that this particular compound is tagged uh, as a fungicide, a herbicide, an insecticide. You can see this right here. We've got the tagging. And the definitions will all be 
will be included so that people can understand what that is. It is possible to expand this set of tags. Here's, a, here's how you would add the tag, the one of interest. You would simply do a basic search and select the ones that you're interested in for the, for the compound. And these are linked up to external ontologies also so that people can see the, the definitions. And in this case, it would be linked out to, to Kevin. So in terms of the tagging, it's just about to be pushed up onto ChemSpider. We will crowdsource uh, the data, get people, allow people to tag it. We'll then extract natural products from there. Uh, we're also going to implement the tagging directly onto the pharmacy website so that we have, um, have the users of pharmacy actually tagging directly on there with additional um, terms that may be of interest to them. We also want to try and source uh, additional data to push into the pharmacy database. And there may be data sets around the world that are sitting in labs that we can host. Uh, we'll include that. We're also going to utilize not only dereplication procedures based on NMR and the fact that there are uh, structural features generated, but we're also going to pre-fragment the entire data set using rules-based approaches. Uh, again, we'll be working here with ACD Labs. They have mass spectrometry fragmentation prediction tools. We will take the data set, we will push it through their um, mass spec fragment fragmenter. We're presently working on the correct and appropriate exchange formats so that they can provide us the data in a format that we can then host build the search interfaces to. So that not only will people be searching on the parent mass of the compound, but also any fragments. Uh, and this will also be of use to the uh, computer-assisted structural elucidation process that, uh, that will be developed. So this is all to support structure identification and replication. Just out of interest, many of you will be interested in natural products. So there are a couple of volumes presently in development edited by myself and my colleagues, Gary Martin at Merck and David Rabinac at Bucknell. Uh, we've been working with some of the world's top authors in the fields of natural product structural elucidation by NMR. Uh, it's a two-volume series that will be released in 2015, and we've been uh, we're presently working on assembling the volumes. We believe they'll be, they'll be excellent uh, documents for you. Uh, also in development, we uh, I'm working with one of my colleagues at, uh, at ACD Labs, Mikhail Lajberg, and the technical lead, the original technical lead for the project, Kira Bluna. We built the Computer Assisted Structural Elucidation Platform, ACD Structural Elucidator. Uh, that book is being written, and that has got a real focus on the complex nature of natural products, and that will include a functional demo of the software for you to test. So pharmacy is progressing very well. Uh, again, the project is led out of Aberdeen University, um, but on this particular project, the people that uh, I should recognize are Alexei Pshinishnev and Valery Kachenko, who have worked very hard to build the overall architecture. Uh, also, our colleague, Karen Karepatian, who has worked to do the data repository side. Um, Marcel Jaspers, leading at uh, Aberdeen, John Bronson, Murray Monroe, uh, Marinlet Serin uh, from RSC, has worked to, uh, to bring Merlin in house, and uh, Patrick Wheeler and David Hardy at ACD Labs, who are working on the, the NMR, the mass spec, the replication the systems, the structural use of data. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>